got uh, Sergio de la Sala, which is uh, very exciting. So a wonderful way to, to bring the uh, book festival to a close. Sergio is uh, here to promote this book, which is called um, Tall Tales About the Mind and the Brain. It's a fantastic book. It's, it's um, uh, introduced and edited by Sergio, uh, a collection of essays uh, by academics who have been asked to uh, expose the myths that are typically told about um, uh, the brain and the mind. So let's have a round of, of applause for Sergio. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Even people down there in the cheap seats. <laughs> okay, it's a pleasure to be uh, uh, here. Indeed, uh, uh, I took it as a sign of recognition of uh, what I've done so far. Uh, today, we'll be discussing the brain and the mind. Now, uh, what Mark didn't tell you is that although I am Italian, um, I worked several years in Aberdeen before moving down to uh, Edinburgh for some good reasons. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so if you uh, still hear a notch of an accent in my voice, it's because I nurtured it. Uh, I am a, a foreigner, uh, an Italian, and uh, when I joined Aberdeen, a few days after I joined the department, I found this uh, on one of the daily um, <laughs> newspaper. Apparently, if you have a, an accident, after the accident, you get a disease, which is to get an Italian accent. <laughs> <laughs> and this may well be true, and in fact, it's a very difficult language to master your language. In fact, after 15 years, I still have to come to terms with the idea that uh, I cannot um, eat or buy one broccolus. Uh, <laughs> or I cannot um, eat a bunch of asparagi. <laughs> However, the issue of uh, getting a foreign accent after a lesion is one of the myths that you read on the newspapers over and over again. It's called foreign accent syndrome. It doesn't exist. People after uh, an accident, when they bang their head, they have a disorder called dysarthria, whereby they speak differently than before. But in the ears of the bystanders, <coughs> this different accent sounds foreign. So people believe that there is a foreign accent syndrome after the accident. Even scientists believe the most bizarre things on Earth. So it's not that scientists don't believe strange things and lay people do. We all do. Uh, this is Nobel Prize um, in chemistry. He strongly believes in astrology. I don't. I'm a Libra, and Libras do not believe in astrology. <laughs> so what scientists do is try to say, all right, let's compare these ideas with available evidence. When we check these ideas against available evidence, most of these ideas that we hear in cocktail parties do go away. So how it comes that, for instance, we believe that uh, we only use 10% of our brain? Uh, this is, you may remember um, a movie with uh, John Travolta, Phenomenon, when he was struck by uh, light coming from outer space and became phenomenally intelligent. Apart from the fact that there was a problem with the casting here. We all like to be seen as intelligent. And uh, we read on um, newspapers almost every day that there are magic pills or magic tricks to make us more intelligent. Now, the 10% myth, myth arose when William James, almost a century ago, um, postulated that we only use 10% of our potentials. This was translated by a self-help advisor in 10% of the brain in a book which followed. And was based on the fact that at the time, we thought, people thought, that part of the brain, the anterior part of the brain, the frontal lobes, did not have any function whatsoever. And this uh, 
was a century ago and persists in a um, uh, movie in Hollywood. However, we know also that after a lesion to the frontal lobes, people change, people change behavior. It's not easy to pin it down to intelligence or to memory, but there are differences. So after a bang in the head, people change personality. They do change behavior. The frontal lobe, the anterior part of the brain, allow us to think, allow us to um, plan ahead. Uh, it's something difficult to score in terms of IQ. In fact, it's a very um, recent event in, in the brain. Um, Homer's never used uh, terms like think, decide, believe, but always my heart told me to. But if we move to another <laughs> Homer, we realize that uh, not only uh, the brain allows us to do all these things, but it does so using different areas, different modules, different bits and pieces of the brain do different things, including the so-called silent frontal lobe. So I want to show you one example of a patient with lesion in this area uh, to make clear that there are no redundant systems in the brain. Even a tiny, tiny lesion can produce exorbitant um, uh, deficits. And the syndrome I'm going to share with you is called anarchic hand. It's a syndrome that we discovered a few years ago, whereby people uh, who are affected will use one hand to grab whatever at sight, whatever they see, uh, claiming that that's not what they want. They will see things and use them with one hand, the anarchic one, and try to avoid um, this gesture, this action, with the other, the healthy um, hand. Now, whoever has kids, you know that uh, this happens all the time when they try to slap one another and they claim it's not me. <laughs> now I show you a video clip of a patient, which is less funny because this is a real patient. And she does exactly the same. She's trying to grab little tokens with one hand, and the other hand tries to avoid her grabbing little tokens. And the two hands end up fighting with one another. And she has a tiny, tiny lesion in the frontal lobe, exactly the um, uh, area which were supposed to be silent. There are no silent areas in our brain. We use it all, unfortunately. Metta il cerchio rosso. She's trying to pick up tokens with one hand, but the, the anarchic hand picks up the wrong tokens and the other hand is fighting to uh, pick up the right tokens. So she said, she doesn't, my hand doesn't listen. So she said, what, what are you doing with that poor hand? My hand does whatever it wants. It has a wheel on its own. <laughs> 